This is an African giant pouch rat. And these amazing animals save lives. And today, we're gonna learn all about it. These are hero rats. These rats have been trained to sniff landmines. There's an estimated 110 million landmines in the ground right now across the world, killing or maiming 5,000 people annually. It is incredibly dangerous, difficult, and expensive to remove them. There is no map of these mines. They must be painstakingly detected and extracted. It costs about $30 to plant one and about 1000 to remove it. It's a massive global problem. Enter the giant African pouched rat. When I first heard this story, it all sounded a little crazy. How can these rats do this and not explode themselves? How do you train them? It's like nature made this animal to help. It's pretty wild. So let's visit Apopo, the nonprofit organization that turns these rodents into heroes. Hey, it's Mike Corey of Fearless and Far, and welcome to Sekoine University of Agriculture here in Morogoro, Tanzania. Behind me is a facility doing some amazing things with rodents. Let's go check it out. Let's meet Lily, who was the communications manager here at Apopo, to explain how they first start the training. So these rats are how old exactly? These rats are six weeks old. Six uh, weeks old. So they're undergoing their socialization stage of training, which is the first stage. And they basically get to hang out and play. And so his, his job right now is to play with baby rats, yeah, basically. Much. <laughs> That's a great job. It's a great Sign job. Sign me up. <laughs> so normally they're not that social, I guess, the rats, by nature. They're very social creatures, they actually. Are. But, you know, in the wild, they're prey. So they're also oh. very afraid and skittish, and their natural reaction is to bite or to scratch or to, you know. So we have to get them to trust us, but also learn to trust them and know what they're comfortable with and their boundaries. So just playing with them and introducing them to different smells and, you know, like he's got flowers in there and leaves. Yeah. Um, things that they might, might encounter on the minefield so that they're not distracted by them, which is part of why they're so good at finding landmines because they're naturally very curious. Can I, can I, can I touch or? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can touch. Yeah. <laughs> and what happens after the socializing? So after socializing is basic clicker training. So we, we teach a rat to associate the click sound with a food reward. Mm -hmm. And after you, that? After that, we have indication training which means we have a small tea egg filled with TNT that we put out on a table with soil on it. And the baby rat has to find that tea egg. And when they put their paws on it, they hear a click and they get a reward. Obviously not active TNT. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yes, well, it's TNT. It's inactive unless there's a huge... A force. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> Which, so real TNT. Yeah, well, I guess it has to be real it's TNT. It's real TNT. It has to be because that's what they use in landmines, right? It, absolutely. Uh -huh. And so um, why tea eggs of all things? Uh, because they have holes at the bottom and they're already ready made. So yeah, I guess that kind of mimics the, the landmines. But it's not all work. Lily tells me that there's a party here every single Friday. Um, so every Friday we have Full Cheek Friday. Full Cheek Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they don't work in the weekend, we give them a feast. Mm -hmm. So I put down different types of food just to show what they will go for. They look there. very excited. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> so yeah, that's something like uh, people, the pouches are in their cheeks like yeah. a hamster. Full Cheek Friday. I see why it's called Full Cheek Friday. Because I think he's got enough for himself and all his buddies in his cheek there. Uh, wait, the banana's cool. <laughs> Full Cheek Friday montage? Yeah, I think so. Let's recap all of this quickly because it's really cool how it all works. There are four steps to this Hero Rap Boot Camp. Let's start with step one socialization and habituation. Since these rats are normally nocturnal and skittish around humans, they must be played with during the daytime. That's this guy's job. The second step is basic clicker training. Food is given. When the rat eats it, it gets a click. Click equals food. Food equals good. Moving on to the third step, it's indication. There's one tea egg on a table. When the rat gets close, it gets a click. The fourth step, discrimination. The rats are placed in a small dirt box and they have to find the tea egg. When they do, 
they get a click reward. The last step is a mock scenario with many tea eggs and distractions. Let's talk to Lily again about how it all comes together. So this is the soil floor stage of their training. Um, so Samanda is going to harness this rat. They are six positive tea eggs and eight negative tea eggs hidden under the surface. Um, the rat will be attached to the line, so they will be walking up in one direction. Both handlers will take half a meter step and then they walk, the rat will walk back and when they find something um, that has a smell of TNT, they will dig it up. If it's correct, they hear a click and they get rewarded. Got it. Great. Let's see it in action. In the dirt patch, there are buried tea eggs filled with TNT, marked red. But there's also duds filled with smelly things like flowers or coffee, and they're marked blue. Nothing quite yet. Then he paws the ground. It's the signal. He's found something. Hear that click? It means he found a tea egg with a red mark. With TNT, it's a success. He returns to his trainer for the reward. What a smart little guy. The training's working. But we never tackled the question, why rats? We meet Christoph Cox, the CEO and co-founder of Apopo, to tell us some more. Why specifically rats? Rats are intelligent animals and they're very well researched and they have also a very sensitive sense of smell. Uh -huh. And uh, we chose this particular rat, the African giant poached rat, because compared to other rats, it lives longer. This one lives up to eight years, so it makes the, the return on investment better. <laughs> And they're also a bit bigger, and they look for their food underground. And uh, they're also rats, they like doing repetitive tasks. They're very trainable, but at the same time, they're not overcomplicated, like, for example, a dog, you know. So the training standards for a rat are a bit easier. Mm. Putting all the facts together, it takes 9 to 11 months to train a rat. A lab rat only lives 2 or 3 years. These giant pouch rats live 6 to 8. So if you train one, it can typically be on the job for two to six years. They're called pouch rats because they store food in their cheeks and then go hide it in a burrow. So they're used to finding smells underground anyway. Also, they're too light to set off a mine. A dog has a great sense of smell too, but it's too heavy and it would trigger it. Add all of this together and you've got a rat that can save lives. However, the applications of this rat's incredible skill set doesn't just end with landmine detection. Christoph explains they're finding new ways to use giant pouch rats. And then we also started training rats for the detection of tuberculosis. What we do is we collect the samples of those hospitals every day, which I checked mostly by microscopy, but they miss a lot of the positive patients, so mm. our rats go over them again, and by doing so, we have already found more than 15,000 patients, which were told in the hospitals, you're negative, go home. Uh, but it's not only the rats, we do have to confirm those samples with, with technologies which are accredited by the WHO before we can bring those patients to treatment. And now we're also doing a new project, which we call the Rescue Rat. It's a, a rat equipped with a mini backpack, uh, with camera and tracking and communication technology because at the moment there's no technology which can enter complete into the debris actively searching for survivors after an earthquake uh -huh. and then uh, communicate and, and, and come back. And the rats can just scoot in there and, and show you the people even with the, the camera back. That's what we are working on yeah. We work together with, with Eindhoven University on the technology and we are doing the training of the rat. How cool is that? I knew about the landmines, but didn't know that the rats can actually smell people who have been infected with tuberculosis, didn't know they can actually find people who are lost in debris from an earthquake, and didn't know they're actually starting to be used to find illegal animal products that are being smuggled in container ships. So, I know rats might not have the best reputation, but what do you think now? Any rat fans out there? What about hero rat fans? Let me know how you feel about rats in the comments. Some animals have legitimate superpowers and Apopo are harnessing those to save lives. It's actually really cool. If you want to learn more about hero rats, rescue rats and the like, there are links in the description to Apopo. You can help them out, you can learn more and you can also just see the incredible things they're doing with these rodents. Also, big love to Gumbo, who was my contact to make this trip happen. If you go to Tanzania, make sure to contact him 
as well. For me, I'm Mike Corey of Fearless and Far, and I hope you enjoyed this very special video about hero rats in Tanzania. See you next time.